Who's dead? God or Charles Darwin? Michael Behe, a biochemist. John Lennox, a mathematician. Stephen Meyer, a geophysicist. A professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University, Michael Behe holds an undergraduate degree from Drexel and a doctorate in biochemistry from Penn. He's the author of a number of books. Emeritus professor of mathematics at Oxford, John Lennox grew up in Northern Ireland, earned his undergraduate degree from Emmanuel College, Cambridge, and then went on to earn not one and not two, but three doctorates in an academic career of astounding distinction. A former professor of geophysics at Whitworth College, Stephen Meyer is now a fellow at the Discovery Institute. He holds a doctorate of the philosophy of science from Cambridge. Dr. Meyer has published, again, many books, including his Over time, to put it crudely, Einstein has become easier and easier to believe. Darwin publishes On the Origin of the Species in 1859. Briefly, as was true of Einstein, also of Darwin, has he become easier and easier to believe? Michael? No, the opposite. The opposite. John? The exact opposite. Stephen? Theory has been progressively disconfirmed by multiple observations in multiple subdisciplines of biology. All right, all three of you come out swinging. Uh, gentlemen, you're about to take a layman through three problems with Darwin that the last few decades have turned up. Problem one, Stephen, this is for you. Feel free to join in, but this one for Stephen, particularly, the fossil record. The Cambrian, Cambrian, how's it pronounced? In the Either way, yeah. All right, the Cambrian or the Cambrian explosion. What was it, and why is it a problem for Darwin? It was a problem that Darwin himself knew about in 1859. The Cambrian explosion is the, uh, refers to an event in the history of life in which the major groups of animal forms, uh, the new body plans that are exemplified by the largest categories of different types of animals, uh, appear very abruptly in the fossil record with no discernible connection to ancestral precursors or intermediates in the lower Precambrian strata. And this pattern of abrupt appearance of the major groups of organisms, of biological or morphological innovation, as it's called, recurs up and down the sedimentary rock column. The first in uh, winged insects, the first dinosaurs, the first birds, the first mammals, the first flowering plants. There are multiple instances of this type of abrupt appearance. And so the fossil record looks very different than Darwin anticipated that it would look. He depicted the history of life as a great branching tree where the the forms of life we see today emerged gradually from one or very few simple forms at the base of the tree, at the trunk of the tree. But instead what we see, it looks more like a lawn or perhaps an orchard of separate trees where the major groups of organisms appear abruptly without connections to those ancestral pre precursor forms. So uh, uh, the Cambrian explosion was the first that got noticed. As you say, Darwin himself noticed that this was a problem, but uh, this is from my reading, add to it or correct me. As I've got it, the record shows one abrupt, abrupt meaning a few million years, but in the geologic time, that's the blink of an eye, one abrupt event after another. Photosynthesis, just all of a sudden it's there. The Avalon explosion, the great Ordovician biodiversification event, whatever that may have been. The Silurian Devonian terrestrial explosion. Fish appear, birds appear, dinosaurs appear, mammals appear, okay. So the obvious objection to this is, well, we've only really been digging since about Darwin's time. The Earth is big, geologic time is essentially endless, there are fossils there, we just haven't found the intermediate forms. 